the signature designer part of the Crossware Mail Signature. On the left hand side we have a list of the things that we can work on. Signatures, signature blocks and images. Then under our admin section, additional things like the fields, so that's information we may be getting from our directory or other places. Rules such as when a particular signature or signature block is applied. Before we start looking at our signatures, just a word about the construction of them. There will be parts of the signature which apply to everybody in all circumstances and we describe those as our main signature. And then there will be pieces that you only use sometimes. So for example, this header information with the social media icons on might only be used the first time that you email a new person outside of the company. Your disclaimer might go on every email that goes outside of the company. And they're what we call signature blocks. So a signature is usually made up of a main signature and one or more signature blocks that are triggered based on particular information you give it, like whether it's internal or external, or perhaps for something like an advertising banner based on a particular date. So let's start by creating a new signature. Now you can create a signature using some of the templates that are built into the product, what I'm going to show you now is actually how you start from scratch. So our signature will need a name and a description if you'd like to give it one. And then we dis dis decide how this particular signature should be applied. A main signature can be applied based on membership of a group and that can be in an individual or it could be based on a rule such as, is it Friday? I'm going to set this to be a membership of a group and actually I'm just going to set it to an individual person. Then we decide which emails this goes into. Is it every email? Is it just new ones or should it be replies only? Now what we mean by a new email is this particular signature is applied the first time I email you out of the blue. But when you reply to me and then I reply again, that's now, if you like, a conversation. So that's no longer a new email. Replies only is often used where somebody wants a less complex signature for replies. Perhaps you don't need all the graphical information when you're doing a reply backwards and forwards with somebody. I'm going to leave that as all my Amy emails for the moment. And then when do we put it? Normal position is immediately after the text we've just typed. The header goes to the very top of an email, such as that social media information you saw on a previous screen. And a footer goes to the very, very end of an email. So if you have a long email reply history backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, the footer goes to the very, very end of that. But I'm going to leave that in the normal position for the moment. Notice you can build a signature which only contains blocks. It's not something that's commonly done, but it's there as an option in our software. Then we actually design the signature. So we have built into the software what is known as a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. So in this editor we can do things like put in words, we can bring in information from the directory, we can build in tables, we can put in images, all sorts of things. So let's begin by just putting in a simple table just to make the layout of our signature a little easier to see. And I want to keep it quite simple. I just like to have the person's name and their phone number plus the company logo on this particular signature. So the person's name information is held in the directory and we can get at it from this option on the right hand side called fields. And in our list of fields are all of the fields that are available. So I would like to have first of all the first name and I just click and drag that into my signature, put in a space, then put in the last name,
I might now want to put in an image. Now you can bring in images from anywhere really into your signature, but we have built into the software something called an image library. And the advantage of the library is that this allows you to put into the software the correct images that can be used in the signature. So it's the current version of the logo with the right sizes and colors, etc. And we recommend that those images are kept to a small size, less than 10K, because that will render very quickly at the end user's client. So let's just pick up a logo, just pop that into my signature. And then on the next line, I might just put in the phone number. And again, that's held in my directory. So I can just open the list of fields and pick it out from the list. Okay. Now all the time that you're working on the signature, you can see how it's being built by using a couple of test methods. We had the option to test, send a test email, but also you can use something called the signature preview. So let me just save what I've done so far. And then we'll look at the signature preview. So what the preview allows you to do is to have a very quick look at what you've done so far to see how it's laying out. Okay, I've got my name there and the phone number. I can see all the bars in the table, so I might want to set those so I can't see them. And notice that in the preview, you can choose who the email comes from and who it goes to. So if it should look different, for example, if you're going outside of the company to the way it should look if you're emailing a colleague, you can change that to field to be an external address, update the preview and see how it looks. Now, at the moment, we haven't set this to look different internally or externally, so that wouldn't make any difference. But that's OK. Let's have a look. Just change this table so I can't actually see the borders. Let's set those borders to zero. Oop. There we go. OK. Now, as, as a default, the system will also create for you a plain text version of the signature, which shows underneath. You may like the auto-generated version, or you might need to customise it. Now, in this case, we've, we've used a table and a logo in the main signature above. You can see when it's auto-generated, it looks a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to customise that and say, well, let's at least put in a new line between the name and the phone number. Also notice that if you need to, you can directly edit the HTML code. The editor allows you to do all the things you would expect to do, like change the font, change the size that you're using, change colors. But if, for example, you needed to use 13 point font, and that's not one of the standard options from the editor, you could actually go into the HTML code and edit that directly. This is also useful if you already have a signature layout built in HTML that you'd like to bring into our software. You can simply copy and paste it into this section and then tweak it to make it look exactly how you want it to look. So that's our first signature. At the bottom, you'll notice it says signature blocks and there's nothing there. We've not yet linked any signature blocks such as disclaimers or banners to this main signature. So the next thing we need to do is to build any blocks that we need to use define how they will be used and link those to this particular signature. So let's save my changes and go now and have a look at signature blocks.